subject of uh, today's video is uh, cloud solutions comparison between AWS, Google Cloud, OpenStack and Microsoft Azure. I'll be making that in uh, one, two, three, four segments to make it concise. And um, if anybody would like to have more um, elaboration on each video, please uh, let me know and I will expand on that. The way I'm going to do that is start off with the history of um, every product or the solution and the company that behind it, that is behind it, the business model they use to be successful, and last but not least, the technical fundamentals and the quality of the product that they're offering. Because it's not necessarily the quality and the fundamentals always follows the business model. And I believe that is normally a decider for every company when they want to choose each of these products. We start off with Microsoft history, as it is the oldest and most successful of all. Um, and this information is actually not very well um, available in the media and advertisements. And uh, it is probably very interesting for some people who don't have exposure to it. As MS-DOS or Windows was not the first operating system to actually start the personal computer and using the uh, chipsets. It was uh, Gary Kildall who actually started the whole uh, operating system belief to be able to control the chipset by creating the CPM uh, operating system, which was uh, running on 8086. And at the time, uh, Bill Gates was uh, very much interested to make a deal with IBM because he was more focused on the marketing and uh, the success and uh, the power and the money that comes with it. Although he failed to uh, persuade Gary to make the deal with IBM, which was uh, porting the CPM on 8088 chipset. And uh, Unfortunately, Gary passed away, but that's a different su subject later on. So <clears throat> what Bill Gates did was uh, as a um, diversion, he found out this other company that was creating the CPM replica, which was called uh, 86 DOS. And this was the actual uh, birth of uh, Microsoft. Because 86 DOS was marketed by Seattle company it was a computer product, which was the 8086 version of the CPM for the Intel uh, 8086 based computer kit. And uh, this was originally known as QDOS. And this acronym stands for Quick and Dirty Operating System. And the reason it was called that because it was not a complete CPM. And in order for Bill Gates to um, be able to sell the product entirely to the IBM, having a lot of other legal tricks that he actually used, um, Microsoft purchased a non-exclusive license for 86 DOS from the Seattle company product in December 1980 for only $25,000. So he bought the operating system, which was not complete CPM, and it was segments of that for a very low price and hired Tim Patterson to uh, port the operating system into IBM PC. It used slower and less expensive Intel 8088 processor. So already you can see a non-finished product was implemented for a lower quality chipset, but offered into the public at a very high price. So generally speaking, Gates marketing strategy to change the name from dirty operating system to MS-DOS 
and this that was the start of the start of the biggest money making scheme scam scheme and uh, that is the fundamental of Microsoft and how it became so successful knowing that if I want to refer to the MS business model to my interpretation is buying out potentially good products instead of developing from scratch delivering the products immaturely selling fixes while the product develops fail fast if the product does not profit in short amount of time and the most recent one um, of such purchases was the Nokia that they wanted to port the windows on, on, on the uh, smartphones and it was a huge failure and they dumped them as soon as they faced it and originally when uh, you <coughs> when at the time we were supporting MS-DOS or Windows 3.1 that came afterwards <coughs> there were many problems with uh, the chipset having uh, these um, restrictions thresholds in the lower conventional memory area um, conventional memory area, higher memory area, and extended memory area, which was absolutely not necessary to categorize them as that. And it was creating lots of problems for the actual operating system and the applications that were running on it. Although we had a lot of problems porting all this, it was always making more money for Microsoft because this fault was not announced by them as a fault. And uh, most of the times, the technicians were getting the blame to be able to fix it. Or another example is the plug and play. They sold it before even it was functional. So we were actually um, solving the problems with the plug and play until it was uh, completed. And whilst they have all these new versions of the Windows sold and make profits over and over again. Interestingly enough, Apple uh, started as a competitor to Microsoft and actually brought up a uh, very um, high quality system running on the 68000 Motorola chipset, which did not have all these memory restrictions. And it was performing very well. But economically, uh, it was not... Uh, performing as well as Microsoft and Microsoft was doing a lot better and the Apple computer was almost destroyed. They even tried to um, implement the Apple on the um, Unix derivative system at the time, which was called Next Step. Ironically, that, that failed, but later on, this second attempt was very successful and all the Apple machines are running on a Unix derivative system, which is a Berkeley. So after the 68,000 machines, Apple moved into reduce instruction set coding, which was on the um, PowerPC, which was developed by Apple, uh, Hewlett Packard and IBM. Although these were again, very high quality machines, they were not successful from a marketing and, and, and sales point of view because of too high quality, I guess. And Microsoft had this non-stop advertisement against Linux, which was developed, starting to develop around 92, and we were the first rebels who actually started using them, naming it unfriendly uh, and naming it unproductive and so on and injecting Microsoft into all the schools, so all the kids are uh, brought up with it. Introducing it as an easy way to go. Which sells? Meanwhile, Linux slowly developed and it did become a product that was easily used. So now Apple operating system in comparison is superior, but it is running on Unix or Linux derivative. And if you choose to, you can run open source products on it. But what Microsoft did was did not have an open source product and Bill Gates was always against it. And kept on advertising against it um, over and over again. Until 
he actually left the company and he's not the managing director or the CEO of the company anymore. Whether he has still some sort of influence on the company, it is not clear. As uh, he's now into um, uh, pharmaceuticals and uh, completely different business, which is not really related to uh, information technology. Although Microsoft hasn't changed its business model. So the Azure conclusion uh, for this video is they still buying things out. So they're going purchasing data centers for its uh, cloud. When you buying any cheap product with potential uh, and uh, naming it as their own, if it is successful, well, they will be making profit. If it's not, they dump it fast. And right now, uh, with the Azure as well, they're restricting access unless you purchase their products. In some uh, projects, a simple connection to a cloud with the Microsoft Azure was uh, using so many overheads that would cost you <clears throat> segment by segment to actually access the cloud, which now they're changing that strategy. And saying that we are becoming open source, although they're using open source products as their own, as they, as they own by uh, uh, rebranding it. So when you go into the Azure, there could be a lot of uh, products that is available for free. But when it has the Microsoft label on it, it will cost you money. So as a decision, business decision, that is very important to be aware of. Whether they're going to change their model and become more and more open source or not, that's a question. But if it doesn't make profit for them, as they are a very profit-oriented company, I doubt it. Not that the company should not be profit-oriented, but there is a relation between how much profit you make and how good your quality is.